Enzo Amore, big cash. Bada boom, realest guys in a room. How you big do? Big cash got the sauce. Hey, you want some pizza? This video is going to be very controversial, but I don't care. Enzo and Cass is one of the biggest drop balls in the last six or some years. This tag team had it all. Charisma, energy, swag, crazy bond with the fans, and crowd control to the max. They're the living personification of being the life of the party. But they only really had a few years, and in 2018, they got fired. What the hell happened? Well... Your favorite feministic Hello Kitty enthusiast Spurs of production is gonna take y'all back, let's get it. So to really get you in the gist, yeah, I see you in that black shirt looking good, gang. You killing it, man. But yeah, to start, we had to look at early NXT. Early NXT was such a trip. It was such a joke, I simply think it was made just for Vince and his puppets to have some laughs. But the keys wow. to the kingdom would I mean, be passed down in Triple H wrong. and everything changed. While WWE was on cringe bag autopilot mode, and while that was going on, Triple H was building the future. Triple H basically built the entire mid-2010 scene by himself. Mostly all the talent we know and love today are from NXT. NXT gave us people like Bayley, Sasha, Bray, The Shield, Sammy, Owens, etc. It built the WWE as we know it. But with a new era, you need a new crew. Enter Enzo Amore. Not the best look, he had a lot to work on. Enzo would make his debut in May of 2013 and he would get dog walked by Mason Ryan. So at this point, Enzo thought he was gonna get fired. One lucky shot and one man would change his career forever, John Cena. According to Enzo, John Cena would make his way down to NXT and he was scouting the future. John Cena had his eyes on talent and he was asking around and Tyler Breeze would put in a good word for Enzo and Cena was very intrigued. Cena goes up to Enzo and tells him to meet him in the ring. Enzo pulls Cass in and brings him in, W Mans by the way, and Enzo and Cass went out there with Cena, basically for a promo segment against Damian Sandow. This was the opportunity of a lifetime, and Enzo knew this. They would run him down and Cena was very impressed. After this, everything changed, and this was the first promo that Enzo really showed out and he even used the soft line. So the first time he got a big chance, he made the most of it. So at this point, Enzo and Cass were aligned and it was a perfect pairing. You had Enzo to cook people on the mic and you had Cass to cook people in the ring. Enzo was supposed to get fired but now he's getting booked every week and brought Cass with him. Enzo and Cass would do a pretty good as a tag team for the remainder of the year until Enzo would get injured. Simon God's trash ass he, said he uh, broke his leg broke his trying leg to get out of a wrist lock. lock. How is that even possible? If that's true though, that's hilarious. He is the biggest Enzo hater though and so he might be exaggerating just a little bit. But Cass would go solo for a little bit, but it just wasn't the same. Enzo would return months later, and he saved Big Cass from getting beat up by two jabronis. They would then go on to compete in the NXT Tag Team Championship Tournament. They would make it to the second round where they would be eliminated by the Vaude Villains. How poetic. But yeah, Enzo and Cass would basically just ride through and chilling, but it felt like something was missing. They needed something to make them more complete as a unit. Insert... Carmella. Carmella fits so perfectly with this team, it was just a blessing. So one time they were feuding with Blake and Murphy, and Blake and Murphy would come through backstage and they started rising up Carmella. Murphy must have a crazy way with words, his roster is marvelous. But they pass her a box and they spit some game and take a stroll. Mella opens the box and they got her jewelry. So that's how he does it, eh? He's a trick! But yeah, Enzo and Cass were not going for this, they had to get their female back on their side. Blake and Murphy were probably bumping Draco by future because they were on a different timing. Now fast forward a little bit, Enzo and Cass were fighting Sawyer Fulton and Angelo Dawkins. What a team that was. And uh, the saucy servants spun again and they came through and they brought some flowers to Carmella. These guys got it. And then, uh, and then this happened. Oh, Carmella, get to your eyes, Denise. He's doing every trick in the book, bro. I gotta learn from this guy. But yeah, this would lead into a tag title match with Enzo and Cass versus Blake and Murphy. They would unfortunately lose that match, and this was a recurring theme within their career. But this team had so much potential, but for some reason, WWE just never strapped them up. But one reason this might be is because Triple H. Now look, I don't want to spread no third grade relationship drama, but I gotta be real. It seemed like Triple H just didn't like them. I'm gonna be honest though. Triple H sometimes is a horrible scout for talent. If you remember, Triple H hated John Cena, he hated Punk, 
and he hated Enzo. He's just a horrible scout, bro. But those are three of my favorite wrestlers ever. Like, come on, bro. Enzo seemed like way more of a Vince guy, but Enzo went on the record to say that he had a big argument with Triple H in his office. He told Enzo he didn't like that he didn't take advice, and he told Enzo he wasn't gonna change the world. Enzo replied by saying, don't you get it? I am trying to change the world. So what I got from this is Triple H saw potential in him, but he thought that Enzo would ruin it. A few years ago, there was heavy rumors about Enzo coming back to WWE, and Triple H completely shut him down. He said Enzo started all the rumors and he looked super pissed about it. Body language tells a big story by itself. Enzo in interviews is such a great listen and honestly, he has a really great mind for the business. Me and Enzo have the same type of mindset about wrestling. If you listen to any all time great, they'll tell you themselves it's more about the characters and the storytelling than the actual wrestling. Enzo had it. He had the bling, he had the character, he had the mic work. And he, if you wanted the wrestling, big you had big of, Cass. Uh, Enzo, like I said before, right? so it's an absolutely he's perfect got that thing. But Enzo and Cass were grinding it out in NXT, but they were getting way too big for it. How you doing shirts scattered all over the crowd, big pops everywhere they went, and crowds going word for word, bar for bar, every single promo. They just got too over. It was time for the next chapter. The call up. The bigger the moment, the bigger the crowd, the better I'll be. Life is about to change. You thought you slapped. They call it a pop. Most popular tag team in NXT. They officially made it to the main roster. This is one of the most electric debuts in wrestling history. Usually crowds are just dead silent because they're casuals, but for Enzo and Cass, it was deafening. They came out and just started popping their shit. The Dudley boys looked so stressed out, it was hilarious. Most wrestlers will get like one or two words super over with the crowd, but for Enzo, he got like five lines over with the crowd. I don't think people know how crazy that is. And the crowd absolutely adored them. Enzo and Cass were a perfect mid-card act for Raw that made the show that much more entertaining. For a three hour show, you need people like this to make the time go by quicker. And you could say, well, and just throw some long matches on the show, which is cool, but that's what the pay-per-views are for. That's how wrestling has always worked. The weekly shows are supposed to get you hyped for the big pay-per-view matches, and you need good promos and segments for that. But yeah, Enzo absolutely blazed the Dudleys while wearing more chains than Mr. T, Cheetah Print, and Jordan 11s. And shoe game at this time was such a big thing for me, so seeing him pull out all these crazy shoes just made him that much cooler. But nowadays you see so many wrestlers wearing nice shoes, even CM Punk's old ass is wearing some nice shoes, it's wild. But really back then, him and Shane were the only ones that were doing it. On Complex's sneaker shopping, Enzo got asked if any wrestlers would get a Jordan deal in the future, and he said absolutely. Not a if, more of a when. But fast forward six or seven years later, Roman Reigns would get a Jordan deal. Big step for wrestling, man, I'm telling you. But Enzo and Cass after this will qualify for the tag team championships at Payback against the fraud villains. During this match, Enzo would legitimately get concussed in one of the scary spots I've ever seen. Gotch had it out for him the whole time! I'm kidding, but not for real though. This was terrifying. I don't know what they were going for here, but it was just bad. The New Day were outside the ring eating popcorn. I know they felt awkward as hell watching this. Within the next few weeks though, Enzo was back, the crowd was going nuts, and JBL was hating. Bring back JBL for commentary though, he was great. But Enzo and Cass once again would drop some fire lines, and they were back like they never left. Their chemistry was off the charts. The next week, they'd be out to cook the Dudleys again, and they were serving up some snacks for them. They started hyping up all the cheeses. All right, now this is the part where I need some crowd participation. So if you're there in the back, you know what I'm saying, listening to this, I need some help. I'm gonna say some cheeses and y'all are gonna say how you doing, all right? Let's get it. American, Swiss, Gouda, Kobe Jack, Blue Cheese, Sharp Cheddar, Provolone. <laughs> Yo, that might've been the worst thing I've ever done in my life. If you help me out though, I appreciate it, man. Oh my God. <laughs> Shout out to the three people that helped. Alright, anyways, every week it was just something memorable. So if you remember around this time, it was summer 16 and the WWE was hyping up the draft. You had six guys on ladders dissing each other and they started brawling. The GOAT Teddy Long came out and he started hitting all the classics. This was great. By the way, this has nothing to do with Enzo and Cass, but you know I had to get some classics out there, some nostalgia flowing. But yeah, this era was actually great. This same show though, Enzo and Cass will face the Vaud villains. In this match, they went for the same rope spot, but this time, it went way smoother. Nonetheless though, Cass was super pissed and he started laying in. It didn't seem like much, but this showed a deeper side to Cass. 
It also showed their team demographic perfectly, and it showed Cass can have a mean streak which is needed in a top star. But at Money in the Bank 2016, Enzo and Cass face the New Day, the VOD villains, and the club for the tag titles, but unfortunately once again, they came up short for the titles. Honestly, it was getting annoying, but they fall in the category of people that really don't need a title to be relevant, so I get it. But this pay-per-view happened the same day as the Cavs beating the Warriors, so it was just an insane day. Probably the best day ever. But on the next episode of Raw, Enzo and Cass would face local jobbers, and they somehow made it entertaining. They made the crowd do the wave, and before they even finished the wave, Enzo and Cass won the match. This was badass. After the match, the social outcast pulled up. What a team, I would not want to run into them on a bad day. But the whole reason they came out was to prove they were the uh, we hardest in the room. Hey, Bo pulled live, action. I kind of believe it, I'm not gonna lie. Oh, no, but the next week though, things definitely picked up. The club would be feuding with John Cena and they would be stomping him out every single week. They tried to do it again, but Enzo and Cass came out to make the save. How poetic and I really feel like Cena put in a good word for them. Because earlier in this video, we talked about Cena helping Enzo and Cass in NXT, and now they return the favor. Enzo and Cass got the sacred John Cena cosign, they weren't ever gonna fail. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, Cena might have the worst cosign record ever. But yeah, alrighty then. The next week, Cena, Enzo, and Cass were here to F the club up, F the club up. And Cena gave the keys to the kingdom to Enzo, and he let him pop his shit. Enzo did not disappoint. I've never seen anybody ever do this before. Cena literally sat in the corner and let Enzo talk all the shit he wanted. That's how you know Cena actually believed in him. Without ugly in the world, there'd be no beauty. So Luke Gallows, thanks for your sacrifice. Yo, this line always gets me, bro. You got a haircut of a sock on my door. Yo, this guy has the best disses, I swear to God. But the more I go through these Raw episodes, the more I realize how prominent the New Day was and how much I loved them as a kid. I look you want to make a video about like New Day from 2014 to 2016. If you like that, let me know. But yeah, tag team wrestling in general was just peaking here. It was so many good teams. But another thing I realized in this era is it was very gimmicky, but it made it more entertaining. It felt like everybody had a purpose. And this is around the time where Pokemon Go was popular as hell, and the New Day just started naming off random Pokemon. Bro. This segment was a classic. But now we get to Battleground 2016. The club versus Enzo, Cass, and Cena. Cena would end up pinning AJ to get the win, and honestly, this match was just really fun. I wish this team lasted longer, but in the draft, Enzo and Cass would get drafted to Raw. Within the next few weeks, Sasha and Charlotte would be dragging the hell out of each other. Charlotte called Sasha a one night stand, and Sasha came back with the best response ever. You're the daughter of Ric Flair. If it wasn't for a one night stand, you wouldn't be standing here right now. Damn. But then for some reason, Chris Jericho comes out with unease and a scarf, looking to get some action. And Jericho is mad at Sasha for disrespecting royalty and checks her boss credibility. And then uh, Enzo comes out. I don't know, man. I really don't know. And he starts saucing up Sasha and calls her a boss. But yeah, these were two of my favorite acts during the time, so this was a pretty good segment. But Charlotte calls Enzo soft and Jericho mocks Big Cass. Oh, me to spell it out for <laughs> But Jericho was in his bag this year. He was peak comedy. He also called Enzo a hip hop hobbit. hobbit. Mick Foley then comes out with the caveman drip and announces a mixed tag match. This segment was so entertaining. Please go check it out. But yeah, this feud would start between Jericho and Owens, and they had a match at SummerSlam, in which, of course, they unfortunately lost. I've never seen anybody lose this much and be this over in my life. Another big match loss. But instead of falling off, they just kept getting better. And shortly after this, Big Cass would actually compete for the Universal title in a Fatal 4-Way match on Raw versus Owens, Roman, and Seth. He would be eliminated first, but still going for the Universal title this early is a big thing. But let's fast forward a little bit to November 2016. Big Cass will lock Enzo out of the locker room. You know, probably not the first time he got kicked out, but the problem was he had his wee wee out. So he starts free balling it in the hallway and he passes by Titus and yeah, he wasn't pleased. But the next person he passed by was Lana. My God, Lana with the pink on, she was pomponymous. She was so fine, I just created a word. But Enzo tries to bag her, but Rusev was not going for this. Cass then pulls up to the rodeo acting like he didn't set up this publicity stunt. And uh, yeah, shit just went down. But this wasn't just a random segment. There was a purpose for this. And the next week, this whole shebang picked up 
when Enzo said that Lana wanted him to stuff her turkey. My god, this had to be raw after hours. But Enzo was just pissing Rusev off. Because Rusev and Enzo would have a match. And Rusev would hit the meanest kick to the nuts I've ever seen in my life. But the next week, Rusev and Lana were arguing and Enzo was there to get the rebound. Lana tossed her ring off and was telling Enzo all of her problems. Dude to say anything to hit type of shit. But Enzo gets the digits and Lana tells him to meet her at her spot. She wants him to pull up. But Enzo pulls up. Lana is seducing him. And Enzo realizes he fell for the Crazy Story 3 plot. Remember guys, almost all the drama is because of a female. But Rusev comes out and bro got clocked. Yeah, this storyline was not PG at all. These type of plots always hit. But one day, you'll probably go through this too. The next week though, Enzo would get put in sensitivity training. And at the end, he would get jumped again. And it just kept getting weirder because a couple weeks later, they got the HBK co-sign. So at this point, they basically done everything. They got the big pops. They got hella over. They sold all their merchandise. They've done it all. Except for winning the tag titles. WrestleMania 33. This was their time. It was Enzo and Cass versus The Bar and The Club for the WWE Tag Team Championships. This was their match to win. But before the match actually starts, the New Day comes out and they announce that another team were being added to the match. The Hardy Boys will make their return to WWE. And this was amazing. But for Enzo and Cass, it was horrible. This was their big win. But once again, they lost. And the writing was on the wall. Looking back, they did all this on purpose every week on commentary. They would mention Enzo was bringing Cass down and Enzo was also getting him into many fights and Enzo was also eating all the pins. Like we knew what was coming. But on the May 22nd, 2017 episode of Raw, Enzo would get attacked backstage. Nobody knew, nobody saw. But the next week, it happened again. Damn it, where's the cameras, Vince? But Enzo's expressions and acting is top tier. He nailed it every time. But Big Cass would then start pressing Corey Graves on commentary. And I'm glad he always be saying slick shit. But the next week, it would shake up. Cass would get attacked. That boy got wet up. He had poles on him. And shit was nuts. After Cass got up a little bit, he handed Enzo one of his gold chains. The plot was definitely twisting. But somehow Big Show got involved in this. And he started speaking in an NY accent. He always be turning on people. I didn't trust him one bit. But next, Enzo and Cass would lose a match. But then Big Show would come out and help Enzo. And they were doing like a jealous ex angle all over again. But the next week, the attacker would be revealed. The Big Show was innocent. The revival, innocent. Kurt was stumped. But Corey Graves would stand up. And he played footage of Cass faking the attack. Big, Big Cass. Cass you attacked, attacked Enzo. Enzo. You did it right, I did it. This was so sad. Enzo dropped a tear of the goofy goobers. And Cass said Enzo was holding him back. And he hit Enzo with a big boot. Our team was over. Our boys were done. I could see what they were going for. But some pairings are just not meant to be broken up. And this is one of them. This was so sad for some reason. It was like when Brock and Misty and Ash went their separate ways in Pokemon, bruh. But Cass was horrible on the mic. He needed Enzo. And Enzo needed him. But it's cool. The next week, Cass wanted forgiveness. And Enzo actually accepted his apology. Our boys were back. For about a minute. Then Cass tossed his sorry ass down the ramp. The next week though, Enzo would cut one of the best promos of his entire life. Go check this one out. But at Great Balls of Fire, yeah, remember that one? Enzo and Cass would finally face off, and Cass would get the win. But over the next few weeks, Enzo would keep talking smack, and the Big Show would clean it up. But the problem was, Big Show was getting mopped up. They should have made this a one and done, and had them go their separate ways. But Cass would face Big Show at SummerSlam with Enzo in a shark cage hanging above the ring, and Cass would win again. But now, finally we can move on, right? Right? Nope, they would face each other in a street fight match. Not only was this match horrible, not only was it unnecessary, but it would be catastrophic for Big Cass. During the match, Cass would go for the boot, but Enzo would duck and Cass would fall out of the ring and he landed badly on his leg. This pissed me off so badly because it basically ended Cass's career in WWE. I actually just watched a video about Big Cass talking about his depression and anxiety and he was always like nervous going out there and stuff. 
and he was down in so many beers and he was just gonna end it all. And shortly after that, he broke his leg in this match. I can't imagine how badly this hurt for him, man. Like you could tell off his expressions and body language in these segments, like he didn't wanna do this at all. But it's a great listen, go watch that video. The split was so stupid though, and it was just cursed. It shows how dumb WWE is sometimes. For Enzo though, it was time to sink or swim. And that boy was swimming like Michael Phelps. He went to 205 Live and he completely carried the division. Cruiserweights on his back and shit emoji on his ass. He was killing it. However though, the next week for the first time, he got put in check by The Miz of all people. The Miz was basically speaking to his younger self. He said Enzo had so much potential, but he kept messing up. He mentioned how he was kicked off tour buses and locker rooms as well. He ate Enzo up. And unfortunately, Enzo didn't have a comeback this time, but everything he said was true. Enzo got humbled. There's always a bigger fish. I will say though, he got Miz back during their match and he said this. Asking that little baby is, who's your daddy? Yeah, he got him, I ain't gonna lie. But at no mercy, Enzo would face Neville for the Cruiserweight title and Enzo would beat Neville with a low blow. Enzo was now the king of the Cruiserweights. The literal next night on Raw, the Cruiserweights would main event the show. Just like that. Enzo would be having a celebration and the Cruiserweights would be on the stage. Neville would come out looking like he'd never seen the sun and he wanted revenge. Enzo had a no-hit clause, so if Neville hit Enzo, he'd never get a title shot ever again. It didn't matter though. He made up his mind. He started beating the shit out of Enzo, but everyone watched. It got worse though. After Raw went off air, Enzo would literally get the beatdown of a lifetime. Braun Strowman for some reason would come out and acting like it was 405 Live, and he would drop his ass. But then, the whole Cruiserweight division would get a piece of the action. This is basically like what happened to Drake. But they were taking turns popping his ass. This is the biggest hating I've probably ever seen in my life. They were whacking his ass in this big circle jerk. There's no other way to put it. This is just bullying. I will say though, if you have a whole division beating up on you on live TV because of your backstage heat, it's gotta be your fault. I could also tell Enzo's a shitty wrestler because in his video, you could hear him communicating with everybody like what to do. Regardless though of heat, hatred, and antics, they got the main event slot. The next week though, Enzo would get his get back the best way he knew how. He roasted the shit out of them all while they sat there and watched it. This segment is incredible. Enzo was too entertaining. My favorite roast though was when he told TJ Perkins to present an ID because he didn't want to assault a minor. Damn. He also told Brian Kendrick he'd be better off going the Squidward route and begging for spare change. <laughs> uh, but shortly after this, Neville would legit walk out. I feel like 80% of the reason he walked out is because of Enzo, but I don't know for sure. As this though, Enzo and Kalisto would be swapping the title back and forth, but in January of 2018, Enzo would be in severe trouble. On January 22nd, 2018, Enzo would be investigated for sexual assault and RAPE allegations. That same day, he would be suspended from the WWE, but it would get a lot worse because the next day, he was fired. This really hurt, man. When everybody was dogging him and his name was getting dragged, the WWE fired him. They fired him for not telling them about the situation, but I feel like they were just waiting to fire him and it was just a last straw type of thing. But he was a problem backstage and then this came up and it was just raps. The thing that pisses me off the most though is the girl completely lied and she didn't get punished. So she threw away and tarnished this man's whole life and just nothing. She's just ugly on the inside and outside, it's sickening. But a couple years ago, WWE fired a dude from NXT for a picture he took like 10 years ago, dog. Like, bro, I just can't mess with that type of stuff. It's just pathetic. Get this, though. On May 16th, 2018, the Phoenix Police Department seized their investigation due to insufficient evidence. If this happened to me, the USA would never be the same. I swear to God, bro. But, like, everything was dropped. Like, nothing happened. But on May 28th, 2018, Enzo would drop a song called Phoenix which honestly is pretty good and it addressed everything. Phoenix is where the accident took place and it also is a unique bird that rose from the ashes with renewed youth to live through another cycle. Perfect name. Lion ass hoe out in Phoenix. When I say this shit, I mean it. F you marks that hated. This is for all my fans that waited. Entertainment's hottest free agent. Bit, I'm reincarnated. Beautiful. But yeah, after this, it was basically over for Enzo. But same with Cast 2 because in June 2018, he was fired as well. 
Down the line, they would make some indie appearances in Ring of Honor and stuff, but nothing was the same. Enzo would have that infamous Survivor Series moment when he hijacked the show, but that didn't really do him any favors either. But that was kind of it. Cass would go on to sign with AW, and right now he's in the learning tree with Chris Jericho, and I'm really happy for him. He's a great asset. But there it is, man. I honestly doubt we'll ever see Enzo and Cass again in the team in WWE, but after all we've seen in the last few years, never say never. But me personally, just one more time, I need to see them come home. It would just be beautiful. But yeah, man, this is one of my favorite teams ever. Whenever they were on TV, it just made me happy. But what an incredible pairing. But y'all better put on some glasses, because everybody can see Birds of Production is entertaining the masses. And I just got one more question, though. Hey, How you doing?